Catastrophism is the study of sudden, short-lived, violent, and global events which reshape the planet. There are substantial indications that the Earth has experienced a series of extinction-level catastrophes over its history. First noted by a man, often called the father of paleontology, Georges Cuvier in 1813. The most recent geologically transformative event is best described with the foundational thesis that 1. The universe is electric, and evidence for the event will match known electrical principles. 2. Ancient writings characterized as myths and legends as well as various major holidays celebrated globally, are in fact encoded with information about a cataclysmic event. And three, the two celestial bodies principally involved in the event are the Earth and the present-day second planet of the solar system, known as Venus, the morning star. Through an integrated and interdisciplinary approach, we will reconstruct an event so large they called it Ragnarok. Click that like and subscribe, my friends. And welcome to Cataclysm 1, Ragnarok, defining the Venus Cataclysm. What if Ragnarok, the prophetic Norse poem about the end of the world, is not only true, but is so old that it prophesied not a coming cataclysm in our time, but a cataclysm that is already in our ancient past? If a cataclysm already happened in our past, then why don't we remember the event? Human psychology tells us that trauma can cause memory loss. And when researchers like Robert Sepper and Graham Hancock say we humans are a species with amnesia, the cause of that amnesia is the Venus cataclysm described in the series. We are literally a species with amnesia. I believe it possible to cure this amnesia with new evidence, large amounts of which is encoded in the ancient stories of our past, and the remainder of which is carved into the surface of our planet. Our past is not only recorded in ancient myths, but that those myths show that these ancients knew what they were doing, as Rundle T. Clark put it, when they mythologized. That mythology is important because it created a hierarchy of characters to follow, and at the very top of the hierarchy are gods like Thor and Zeus, perhaps the most famous of the gods of thunder and lightning around the world. But there are many more, and you can identify them in your native cultural legends by their electrical characteristics. In this way, we can begin to organize characters as a relation within a cataclysmic event. The term God represents the character's primary position in the tale. And so you could say, electricity shaped the earth here. Or you could use the ancient metaphorical language and say, Zeus, the god of thunder and lightning shaped the earth here. So when someone asks, what happened here? Zeus. And here, 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 and here. Zeus, 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 and Zeus. The god of the event was the electric force, evident in the surface feature similarities to electrical models. The latest of which is Andy Hall's keystone pattern, which unlocks the entire hemisphere. This reframing is a form of translation, and you now know your first catastrophism translation term. God equals principal actor, and the God's name, such as Thor or Zeus, notates electricity. The principal force of the event around the world were characters like Thor and Zeus. Thesis one is that the universe is electric, and Thor and Zeus reign in that universe, thus gods. Thesis two is that the information about the Venus Cataclysm is encoded in mythology, and Thor and Zeus win that battle as well. Where was that battle fought? The answer is found across the Central Asian continent and is principally made up of the Himalayan mountain chain rim and the Tarim Basin, which represents ground zero in the Venus Cataclysm. Right here is the closest Venus came to hitting the Earth before it bounced off our magnetosphere like a ball off a balloon. Because Venus bounced off the magnetosphere, and not the surface of the Earth, we term this a near-impact event, and not an impact event. A 2012 peer-reviewed paper in the Journal of Meteorics and Planetary Science gives the following primary characteristics of meteor craters, quote, Most impacts occur at an angle with respect to the horizontal plane. 
This is primarily reflected in the ejected distribution, but at very low angle, structural asymmetries, such as elongation of the crater and non-radial development of the central peak become apparent. Here on the Asian continent do we find a structure which I have termed the near impact site. What I describe next occurred at the moment the two bodies came closest and a discharge occurred. This entire process is described in the Greek mythology. Zeus sent his son Perseus to save Athena by decapitating Medusa where she slept. The translation goes like this. Electricity. Apply the laws of electric charge. The earth negative charge, charge per Zeus and ionized Venus in a discharge, canceling the, canceling the magnetosphere that gave Medusa and her alter ego Gorgon of the three Gorgon sisters a feminine status. Because the Earth's ability to absorb energy was greater than Venus, it can be correctly oriented to be said that Venus fell to Earth and bounced off the Earth. This structure is 1,600 miles across and more than 3,000 miles long, and in my humble opinion, more than large enough to create an event worthy of the title Ragnarok. Fundamental to science is good observation, and my observations need peer review, and you, the viewers, are my peers. If you are observing the same structural symmetries or similarities outlined in the paper here in the surface of the Earth, and if not, what elements are lacking? The link to the full paper is pinned to the top of the description for you to read if you'd like. Carl Sagan famously said, Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Mount Everest, the tallest mountain on Earth at 29,029 feet, rests directly at a 90 degree angle to the Himalayan mountain rim in relation to the Tarim Basin epicenter. My extraordinary evidence of an extraordinary event is the most extraordinary point on Earth, found directly where it's supposed to be, electrically. The story of Mount Everest is quite easy to explain with an electrical universe perspective. There's an anomaly in the Terran Basin we need to explore, because according to global positioning system data, the basin has a 46 degree clockwise rotation around a central axis. Maxwell's corkscrew rule when applied to the data at hand of a clockwise rotation, indicates that a positive current entered the Earth here in the Terran Basin. If this is a positive current, then the larger site represents a negative charge, which is identifiable in the characteristics of this photo of a negative charge taken by John Matthias Kuhn in 1950. The image is of a direct current negative charge. In the center is the positive current in the 46 degree Terran Basin rotation, and surrounding it is the associated negative charge. Positive current, negative charge. Positive current, negative charge. On the surface of Venus, the scar of the event left not a mountain, but a chasm called the Artemis Chasm, and the scar is properly situated in the southern hemisphere of the planet. According to mythology, Venus lived in the Temple of Athena, and temples, like the temples of our skulls, are above the body. Venus was above the Earth in a polar configuration to the north, and so its scar should be in its southern hemisphere, and the Earth's in its northern. On planet Venus, we don't use Maxwell's right-hand corkscrew rule. You use Maxwell's right-hand thumb rule. Current flowed out of Venus like the anode end of a battery. Positive current, negative discharge. This can also be described as saying that this portion of Venus's surface began falling on this portion of the Earth in successive shock waves, forming the mountain's rim. Mount Everest represents the place 
or the positive charge of the Earth most absorbed the incoming negative charge of Venus. To put a fine tip on it, Mount Everest represents the neck of the descending negative charge and the orientation of the discharge according to the Earth's magnetosphere at near impact. Welcome to a brave new world of catastrophism. Don't forget to share this video and your observations and click that like and subscribe button. Peace.